yeah hi good evening one and all uh, okay now i'll be discussing a few important things which are important in neat point of view related to this today's topic uh, that is allergy and hypersensitivity okay uh, of course it is one of the important topic in related to the immunity and uh, I, i'll just go uh, i mean like very precise in mcq point of view okay so coming to the basic classification of hypersensitivity which is given by coombs and gel so initially the classification contains only four types that is type 1 immediate which is also called as an atopic and anaphylactic these two types are subtypes in type 1 and the second one is antigen antibody mediated and third one is immune complex mediated and type 4 is cell mediated which is also called as a delayed hypersensitivity and recently added is fifth one which is sometimes called as a subtype of type 2 means the fifth type will be a part of type 2 okay so we'll go in detail in respect to each and everything coming to the type 1 type 1 is immediate which is also called as an atopic or anaphylactic okay so the type 1 uh, is generally an allergic reaction that is uh, provoked uh, when it is re-exposed to a specific antigen. So a basic definition of hypersensitivity is very simple. When you get exposed to a particular antigen, the body will get sensitized to it. So when you are repeatedly exposed to the same antigen, the body will show some sort of reaction in the form of symptoms clinically that is called as a hypersensitivity. Okay. So the exposure for the type 1 can be either inhalation or injection or ingestion and it is mainly mediated by IgE antibodies or IgE immunoglobulins and partially by CD4 TH2 cells and mast cells and as I already said like atopy is a subtype of type 1 and uh, uh, it is caused I mean uh, this atopy is generally uh, genetically mediated which is under the control of chromosome number 6. Yesterday we have discussed question and I'm secure related to the chromosome number 6 that is HLA complex is coded by the short arm of chromosome number 6. So make a note chromosome number 6 is important MCQ. And this causes an inflammatory response to an immediately. It can be an immediate which can take place in a few uh, seconds to minutes or it can be prolonged. And it can be either local or systemic and the symptoms ranges from mild irritation to sudden death due to anaphylactic shock okay so the treatment options are you need to prevent this for this you need to give antihistamines you need to give epinephrine you need to give corticosteroids so this is the basic treatment option we'll be discussing the treatment option in detail further so a simple physiology how it goes like whenever this pathogen whenever this allergen or whenever this antigen enters it sensitizes and activates the ige production once the IgE is produced IgE is going to bind to the mast cells with this FCE receptor so when, when a repeated exposure of the same antigen occurs the mast cells get activated and they release the calcium whenever the calcium raises and the calcium releases and this is going to give you the clinical outcome or the clinical effect so some common examples I mean your, your paper your MCQs will mainly move in these common examples they just give okay this particular uh, SD phenomenon is seen with which type of hypersensitivity that is type 1 okay Uticaria is seen with which type of hypersensitivity high fever seen with which type of hypersensitivity anaphylactic shock is related to which type of hypersensitivity these are the most commonly asked questions so please make a note of all of these examples examples are the most important thing when we talk about hypersensitivity okay so some dental materials will be concerned with type 1 hypersensitivity but most of the dental materials will show type 4 hypersensitivity which is most common in dentistry okay dental material related hypersensitivity is type 4 if they ask both type 1 as well as type 4 type 4 is more compared to type 1 so make a note that is more important rather than anything here okay so we are done so the next one is uh, about the treatment option for this hypersensitivity the basic treatment option how you need to 
go ahead the documentation everything you should make a note and whenever this anaphylactic shock uh, is there uh, you need to take a few precautions of this maintaining of a b c d airway breathing and everything should be maintained cpr if necessary should be done all these are basic things you just go with the slide uh, and i'm not going to discuss much about this but the main important aspect is pharmacological management if you go to the first statement that is for a moderate reaction intramuscular injection of epinephrine 1 is to 1000 0.3 to 0.5 milligrams is a star mcq so just make a note of all of these just go through them uh, first and second lines are most commonly asked as an mcqs and of course corticosteroids too so just just go with this slide it's very important so the most commonly recently asked questions is the most important cell in type 1 hypersensitivity is cd4 th2 cell and the most important cell in the late phase of the type 1 hypersensitivity is snowfill okay these are the most two important things that you have to have a look so coming to the type 2 type 2 is uh, antibody mediated okay uh, <coughs> of course you know that uh, the body can have the sense to recognize the self antigen self cells and non self cells okay which are uh, which are like foreign bodies so that is main 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 concern in the case of a type 2 antibody dependent the type 2 antibody dependent <coughs> excuse me uh, is the antibody produced by the uh, produced by the immune response to bind to the antigen on the patient's own cell surface and it can be an intrinsic or an extrinsic intrinsic is antigen present on the parent uh, i mean the patient cell whereas an extrinsic is some object is observed on to the uh, i mean the parent cell as a foreign as a foreign antigen is called as an extrinsic and the main uh, immunoglobulins that are concerned with this uh, type 2 hypersensitivity is igg and igm and they go within a, a classical pathway okay the the, the complement system which is concerned with this type of hypersensitivity is classical pathway so make a note the immunoglobulins that are present in the classical pathway are, are igg and igm as well as the immunoglobulins that are more concerned to that of the type 2 hypersensitivity are again igg and igm okay this is very very important and the mechanism by which they causes this acute inflammation is by the membrane attack complexes which causes the lysis and death we will be discussing about the pathophysiology in detail so this is a simple like uh, i mean in simple terms the type 2 hypersensitivity is exhibited by three mechanisms one is let i i, I just want to make it as simple as possible the first mechanism is phagocytosis phagocytosis mechanism okay uh, in this phagocytosis mechanism the main phenomenon is generally by the activation of igg and igg and igm so whenever this igg is activated okay it get uh, sensitized with F fc receptor and it causes opsonization and phagocytosis and similarly igg and igm they activates the uh, they activates the uh, c3b and c4b okay which causes this phenomenon this is one type of activation of this type 2 hypersensitivity and the second mechanism is uh, whenever the uh, i mean like self reactive b cells are activated self reactive b cells are activated during the reaction it's going to activate the igm and it's going to activate the igg with the help of cd4 t helper cells so whenever these two are activated it attaches to the host system either it, the attachment either by the intrinsic as well as an extrinsic which is already discussed and if you go further in detail whenever an antigen which is coming from the extrinsic is attaching to the host cell immediately the body sends this igg so this anti and this immunoglobulin which is also called as an antibody is going to react with this antigen which is present on the surface of the host cell to form antigen antibody complex so whenever this antigen antibody complex is formed there will be activation of complement system so the complement system activation takes place by two mechanisms one is immediately the c1 is going to get activated with fc portion the, uh, the c1 is going to activate the c2 c3 c4 and c5 okay so out of these complement components few components they get lysis lysis and they differentiate into two parts that is c2 differentiate into c2a c2b similarly c3a c3b c4a c4b and c5a c5b okay out of these the a components that is c3a c4a c5a they act as an a chemotactic factors okay so these chemotactic factors they attract the neutrophils and they causes the degranulation and they causes the cell in death 
okay they cause the cell death this is one mechanism and the second mechanism is the by the activation of the second component the second component left over is c5b with c6 c7 and c8 and multiple c9 factors means many c9 factors they combine to form a membrane attack complex okay that is called as an mca this mca is going to inject or it's going to penetrate into the cell membrane and it opens the cell membrane whenever it opens the cell membrane due to the osmotic differences the fluid moves inside and the uh, the cell wall i mean the cell will swallows and the cell will lyses so these are the three mechanisms by which the type 2 hypersensitivity activates one is by phagocytosis second one is by the neutrophil degranulation okay third one is by the lysis that is associated with the mca molecules okay so these are the few examples the phagocytosis examples are autoimmune hemolytic anemia uh, autoimmune uh, thrombocytic uh, thrombocytopenia and inflammation related or good posture syndrome uh, fine figures vulgaris and acute rheumatic fever and the cellular dysfunction sir you can just make a note of these examples these examples are very very important coming to type 3 type 3 is called as an immune complex mediated it occurs due to the immune complex antigen antibody reactions which are not removed from the circulation and this is most commonly seen in the various tissues but most frequently seen in the case of an kidneys joints lungs and skin so the mechanism is very simple okay in the first phase a large uh, quantities of soluble antigen antibody complexes are formed in the blood and they are not removed by the macrophages this is the basic mechanism by which the uh, type 3 hypersensitivity starts and the second one is these antigen antibodies uh, complexes are dislodged into the capillaries between the endothelial cells and the basement membrane so initially they are in the middle now they are dislodged into the uh, space between the basement membrane and endothelial cells they are these are the antigen antibody complexes and the third phase is uh, the antigen antibody complexes they activate the c1 that is the classical component pathway leading to the vasodilatation of this particular area so further activation of complement system is completed and they 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 attracts these leukocytes to the particular area so the leukocytes leukocytes shows their action release the killing agents and they destroy the and they destroy and causing massive inflammation leading to cell death and humerus right so these are the basic examples that you have to make a note okay uh, serum sickness uh, post uh, streptococcal glomerular nephritis okay uh, systemic lupus erythematosus these are the most commonly asked questions related examples and the rest examples you can just go ahead with the dental pulse and coming to the type 4 as already said it is a cell mediated or delayed type of hypersensitivity and it is mostly mediated by the t lymphocytes and in specific it is cd4 th1 and uh, 17 okay 1 and 17 are more concerned with this whereas t2 t2 is more concerned with type 1 okay cd4 t2 is more concerned with type 1 and uh, cd4 th1 and th17 are more concerned with type 4 and the classical and the most common example is tuberculin reaction we'll be we'll be learning about the tuberculin reaction further in detail okay so i mean this is taken from a decent book uh, with a beautiful reference you just learn this okay uh, the standard diagnostic test for the latent tuberculosis is a tuberculin skin test okay uh, basically it is of two types one is the tuberculin test okay montrox test and second one is haft test so in in this in this, uh, this montrox test what you are going to do is very simple you are going to inject the ppd that is the peptide derived molecules into the dorsal aspect of the forearm and you are going to observe you are going to observe for the injuration and the palpated area after 48 to 72 hours and you have to measure that okay if the injurated area is greater than 5 mm okay uh, for one international unit of ppd if it is one international unit of ppd if it is greater than 5 mm then it can can be considered as positive if you are giving five units it should be greater than 10 mm so in such cases you can be considered it as a positive just go ahead read read completely the, uh, completely about this slide this slide is very important and second one is something like a gun okay that is a half test it is something like a gun which consisting of a uh, six needles and you need to press on the dorsal aspect of the skin and in this test they have given gradings the gradings are ranging from fry grade fry gradings that is uh, grade 0 no reaction grade 1 is less than 4 discrete papillae and grade 2 
uh, you just go ahead okay this is also is very very important these two tests are very important and they have seen many questions related to these two tests and coming to the rest of the examples that are related with the type 4 hypersensitivity a few autoimmune diseases and infectious diseases are present tuberculosis leprosy uh, histoplasmosis toxoplasmosis uh, uh, please make a note of each and everything make a note rheumatic arthritis will come here and rheumatic fever will be coming in the type 3 uh, hypersensitivity okay so make a note and but the most important question related to this is majority of the dental materials they show type 4 delayed hypersensitivity okay so the last uh, but not the least it's a new one it's a very very rare condition uh, they can call it as in a subtype of type 2 hypersensitivity and the most common examples of the graves disease and myasthma graves if you find option 5 whenever they ask questions related to myasthma graves or uh, graves disease if you find type 5 hypersensitivity you go for it if you don't find type 5 hypersensitivity you can go for type 2 hypersensitivity because it is a subtype of type 2 hypersensitivity and one of the most commonly seen uh, diagram based question related to the hypersensitivity is patch test don't don't uh, don't uh, i mean like don't confuse with the pathology okay pathology test is related to the bechet syndrome and patch test is related to the allergic okay if you want to identify the allergen that is causing the disease you are going to attach a, a patches of all the collected allergens onto the body and you are going to see the induration okay this is a method of patch test and uh, one more question is the hypersensitivity associated with the dental materials is type 4 and type 1 and the most common hypersensitivity associated with the dental materials is type 4 mercury related hypersensitivity latex gloves hypersensitivity and everything becomes under the type 4 hypersensitivity very very i mean in few conditions you can see type 1 hypersensitivity uh, in the dentistry also related to the dental materials okay that's all uh, guys uh, i hope uh, this is a useful video for you and we'll be coming with a few more updates like this for a specific and important topics as as hypersensitivity is one of the specific topic and uh, i mean directly or indirectly you need some sort of uh, concept oriented things related to this so that's the reason why we have made a video probably we uh, will be coming with more and more videos for you uh, we are done for today all the best uh, keep working hard